Greetings, brothers and sisters. We are the L Society. We are the Linux Society. We are here in Berlin to enjoy and learn from each other and to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Linux. We are in 2016, and by now even Evil Corp has gone open source. No longer is source code secretly controlled by monster conglomerates. We all have the freedom to contribute to it and to use it. Brothers and sisters, we have won. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So open source is mainstream now. This is total world domination. Okay, maybe not in desktop, but today we're probably selling more Android devices than laptops. So if ever there was a need to hide in the past, there's no such need anymore. Let's remove those masks. For those of you who don't know that, this was not the anonymous. It was Mr. Robot. I hope that some of you know that TV show. If not, it's worth a try. So this is about a group of hackers called the F Society, deleting and destroying all data and backups from Evil Corp, a gigantic company controlling everything behind its closed doors. It's very exciting to be here with all of you, because not only are we out in the open, but open source is seen as a technology savior. That's why companies have been embracing it because they have to, to remain viable. Linux is 25 years old, with even older relatives, such as free software, and we've been celebrating its anniversary for the past few weeks. So besides eating cakes, drinking, and singing, what are people doing when celebrating anniversaries? Well, they might watch with nostalgia some old family pictures. At least that's what old people tend to do. And as much as I'm fooling myself, pretending still to be young, I was already 14 in 1991. Just out of curiosity, in the room, if you're not 25 years old yet, could you, could you please applaud and make some noise? Okay, so I'm in the old guys category. It's good to see so many fresh faces. You will also get old. <laughs> you might recognize a few faces on that picture. We have our SUSE president of engineering, Ralph Laxa, wearing a German purple shirt. And you should know who the guy in the middle is, obviously. And please, let's not comment on how bodies have changed over 25 years, because making fun of people's physical appearance is prohibited, rightly so, by the Linux Foundation Code of Conduct. So while we cannot make fun of Ralph's body, we can still make fun of his shirt, I guess. But. Another thing old guys tend to do when celebrating anniversaries is remembering what happened back then. In 1991, Tim Berners-Lee presented the first website and web server using HTTP running on a Next computer. And what you see on the screen is how the web, that website was rendered in 1992 using a line mode browser. 25 years later, it's very interesting to see our Linux the World Wide Web and Apache have grown up closely together, supporting each other along the way. In 91, I was 14. I was coding for a while already, trying to animate real-time graphics on Motorola 68,000 CPU-based computers. But unfortunately, I did not have the talent of some of the people who were able to break the official vendor limitations of the hardware by rendering a resolution full screen on Atari ST, for instance, tricking the refresh rate of the monitor and other hacks. And those genius developers, they were not only doing that for fun. A few of them produced some of the best video games at the time, all alone by themselves, with no team, no colleagues. The two guys on the pictures are Eric Chahi, who created Another World, also known as Out of This World in the US, and Jordan Mechner, who developed Prince of Persia, and he even released the Apple II source code on GitHub about five years ago. Now, today, it takes hundreds and hundreds of developers to produce AAA games, and they rely on dozens of SDKs and libraries to avoid reinventing the wheel and speed up the production process. It seems that unlike 25 years ago, today, no matter how great a game developer is, he cannot make a, a big impact on the world as those guys used to do. 
At 25 years old, neurologists say that our brains make a big leap in maturity. The prefrontal cortex then becomes fully operational, which helps us focus, make more logical decisions, make more complex plans, be more organized, and be more disciplined. In our youth, that is the youth of open source, a single developer could do amazing, impulsive things in solitude. Now, at 25, we're also maturing. We too are more focused. We too can make more complex plans come to life. We've become more organized and we're getting more and more disciplined. This level of maturity leads us to collaborate more together to achieve great things. And we are not unique in that. It's true of other sciences and other industries. In 2006, Linus Torvalds said, I often compare open source to science, to where science took this whole notion of developing ideas in the open and improving on other people's ideas and making it into what science is today and the incredible advances that we have had. And I compared that to witchcraft and alchemy where openness was something you didn't do. This illustrates how science has achieved amazing things and keeps improving our lives and societies because it's open. Now, looking back a few centuries ago, before science was fully mature, before they had the internet and GitHub, some individual bright minds active in poetry, philosophy, and other arts and domains could cover most of their contemporary knowledge. These were seen as men who knew it all. People like Aristotle, Roger Bacon, Da Vinci, Kepler, Humboldt, and a lot of others. Ironically, the meeting room that Suze is using here at LinuxCon is called Humboldt. So if ever you manage to know everything, your name might end up on the door of a meeting room. But that's quite unlikely to happen, because the last man who knew everything has likely lived in between 1700 and 1900. Today, no one would seriously claim to be the best world expert in multiple domains at once, like architecture, painting, and coding, for instance. In fact, most of us agree that no idols are tedious. Or as Isaac Asimov said, those people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those of us who do. <laughs> so since most of the brains in this room are mature already, you've probably already concluded this. It seems that the future of open source is about contributing together more and more so that we can achieve more and more complex challenges. We should try to scale our individual brains into a much more larger, collective, connected, and functional brain. Superheroes tend to agree with us. They tell us the same thing. Traditionally lone wolves, heroes got tired and eventually found out that they couldn't save the day on their own. So what have they done? They called their peers to team up. And yes, they are going through superhero civil wars as we've been through flame wars ourselves. But at the end of the day, they are just stronger together, more powerful than the sum of their parts. In our community too, we have gone from individual mighty hulks to groups of Avengers. So fortunately or not, depending on how much you like communicating with your fellow human beings, we have to work more and more together to keep fixing more and more challenging problems. So it might raise a sensitive question possibly even a cliche, but which might still be worth thinking about. Would we rather have genius developers with limited social skills or average developers with good communication and social skills? Well, I believe, and that's only my humble opinion, no company position whatsoever, I believe that genius developers cannot be replaced, even by hordes of guys. Volume and quantity cannot always compensate for bright ideas from single minds. But of course, those bright minds cannot be left alone. They should not stay isolated themselves because it does not scale, because it's suboptimal for efficiency of projects, let alone cross-project activities that we need more and more. And there's even a risk to lose the bright ideas if the genius guys are hit by a bus. So we need to make sure that even the most totally introverted person who avoids social interaction is integrated in our community where his or our input can be used. Now, of course, this is a non-binary dichotomy because luckily human nature is more complex than that. 
Also, as Jim mentioned on Wednesday, by working together, we improve our own as well as other people's skills, and our projects and communities are much more balanced than such a black and white question. So that's true that open source has won, we are mainstream. It doesn't mean we should just stop caring now and let things go by themselves. Because there are endless examples in history of great concepts that have been misused and bent for complying with individual goals, ultimately corrupting, if not destroying completely, the concepts most of the time. We are seeing mass adoption of open source from, from former proprietary businesses always, as well, as, well sorry, as most of the new startups, which is really great. But deviating open source values to accommodate for short-term return on investment via software licensing, or with building somewhat full close stack, locking in customers and users, is not the solution. It's been tried, it does not work, and it's not what we want. Linux is 25 years old, it has matured, it has generated a lot of children, more or less directly. We have to take care of the whole family at best. So now that the open source doors are open to large blue skies, let's make sure that we limit to the bare minimum what could obstruct those doors. First, obviously, it should be about contributing and not only about consuming only. But it should also be not only simply contributing, but contributing in a constructive and healthy way by building and empowering communities rather than having them controlled or managed directly by companies. It should be about companies contributing as peers with other companies and individuals to solve both short and long-term generic goals rather than trying to address specific corporate requirements to try building unique selling points or to try to differentiate from the so-called competition. This all leads to fragmentation. This all leads to vendor lock-in. Taking Suze as an example, open source values always came first in the past. And I can say that with a sense of humility and neutrality because I was not there. I just joined very recently. And that's actually one of the main reasons why I've joined. Now it does not stop. We are constantly and continuously assessing what we are doing, what we are planning to do, with open source values as prerequisites. It has to be open source. It has to be about projects and communities first. It has to be about opening up to partners and individuals to overall aim at being a responsible, corporate, open source contributor, and that no matter which company you work for. Simply having the code available is not enough to ensure long-term viability of open source. We also need to make sure we keep working on fostering inclusive environments where everyone can contribute so that the open source momentum continues and grows for the next decades to come. Last but not least, we need to keep having fun in doing that together. And that's not a demand I'm making to all of you, but more an invitation. A reference that illustrates that, and because I'm French, as you should have noticed by now. <laughs> comes from the great novel by Alexandre Dumas, The Three Musketeers. All for one and one for all, united we stand, divided we fall. So open source has guided us along the way as it has matured, we have to stay true to it. Precisely what got us here is that transparency, openness, and collaboration we need to keep contributing and collaborating in really open ways, even though greed may tempt a few to diverge from that trajectory. To conclude, let's have final words from our, from our friends at the Hell Society. I need to put that back, I guess. Sisters and brothers, we are the L Society. We are responsible for the next 25 years and more to come. Let's collaborate. Let's be the Avengers. Let us continually care together and not allow evil corpse to derail us from our values and rebuild again. All for one and one for all. United we stand, divided we fall. Thank you very much. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day.